Hey, what's going on, everyone? My name is Matt Jarbo. This is Three Buck Theater. And oh, man. Oh, man. Last night, I watched uh, the first two episodes of Star Wars Resistance. Now, this isn't my review of that. I'm going to put those up with the other two episodes that they put on the Disney app. I had no idea. I had no idea that it was going to be out, that they were going to drop a total of four episodes. Um, I've watched the first, uh, I watched the first one. I, I'm going to watch the, the other ones here when I'm done and then I'll review them and put them up on three buck reviews. Uh, link for that will be in the video description. But, uh, I have to say based on the first, the first episode compared to clone wars and rebels, they knocked it out of the fucking park. They knocked it out of the fucking park. It was a little wonky at first. Uh, just with the introduction of Kaz and him being a good pilot and then the introduction of Poe and then also getting used to the animation it being a little bit different. But I have to say, I was I was I was so impressed with it. Uh, I found myself hooked from the beginning. And when they made it uh, to the tanker, when they made it to this, you know, to this lone gas station in the middle of nowhere where, you know, people compete in races in order to basically pass the time that uh, it's kind of a, a, you know, it's not controlled by the empire. It's not controlled by by the new republic. Uh, it's just out there. Again, the Outer Rim territories, the lawlessness of Star Wars is the attraction of Star Wars. It's why we saw it in uh, Rebels. Right. Fighting back against the Empire, but still also going out to where the Empire didn't have as much of a reach here. The the First Order doesn't have as much of a reach. Uh, the New Republic doesn't have the reach, but they uh, but the First Order definitely wants it as a strategic base. And that's what Kaz is sent in to do. Kaz is sent in to basically become a spy. And this is all based on Dave Filoni's uh, grandfather. Right. The store, the, the store it's, or the story itself was based upon that. And so knowing that going into it, it makes me really think, it makes me really wonder and question how much of this is a representation of Filoni's grandfather's adventures in World War II. You will hear stories every once in a while from people who are in World War II and how they go about it and how they, uh, how they, you know, how they deal, how they, how they, how they got through certain scrapes. You know, you, you always kind of hear these tales. Um, and I don't know how much of this is based on that or how much of this is just inspired by maybe his grandfather worked at a depot and they, they raced on the weekends or something. I don't know. But what I know is this is Star Wars and, and I I'm loving it. I'm absolutely loving it. Uh, because it does also deal a lot with a lot of the elements that Star Wars, the themes that Star Wars tends to explore, which is usually fatherlessness. It is. That's a big theme in all of Star Wars, right? Luke not knowing his father, uh, growing up with Uncle Owen. He turns to Obi-Wan as kind of a father figure, right? But then he discovers that Vader is his dad. And then he kind of, want, you know, he's like, oh, there's good in him. I've seen it. Um, Leia, not so much. But then again, it wasn't really focused on her in that regard. You know, you got that with Kylo Ren. Han Solo was a crap dad, right? So Snoke kind of came in. Uh, after Luke uh, betrayed him, right? well, according to Kylo Ren, at least, you know, but I'm sure he looked to Luke as more of a father. Then you have Rey looking at not only Han Solo, but Luke Skywalker as dads. There's kind of an ongoing theme here. Even Anakin and Obi-Wan brotherly, but still, you know, I, I don't want to say a father son relationship because they were clearly brothers. But that 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 theme, that theme still was very, very much represented in, in, in resistance where Kaz his father is a senator. Right. And so he goes to him and this is where I found it to be. I, I kind of I liked the, the the way it started. He goes to his father and he says like, hey, you know, this is what you know, he's going to tell him what's going on. He's going to ask his permission, I think, or he's going to he's going to do something. And his dad's like, oh, what do you need now? You know, effectively saying you're a disappointment. I've gotten you in here. I've gotten you in there. I've used my power to help you. What more do you need? You always need me. And then in that moment, him realizing, no, I'm, I don't need you. I don't need this. I'm going to do this on my own. And I liked the moment because it showed that there was determination behind Kaz's intentions. He wanted to do the right thing. He wanted to help the resistance. Uh, and he wanted, he didn't want to live underneath his father's rule anymore, so to speak, or live under his father's thumb or under, under that influence. He wanted something for his parents to make, to, to be proud of him for. And again, that is ultimately a theme that we see the relationship between children and their parents and, and how dysfunctional that is, is one of the things I, I like about star Wars, because I think it re resonates with, with a lot of people out there and a lot of different reasons. Um, and then of course, you know, him going to, uh, the, uh, the, the, the base, I forget the name of it right now. Uh, but he goes there and he meets, you know, the, his boss who will be effectively become like the, the father figure 
right? He's, he's showing him tough love all the way through. Uh, you know, Poe trusts him, but this guy's unsure and he has to make sure that, uh, you know, and by the end of the first episode, there's, there's a moment between them where like, they're talking about Kaz's mission about where to, you know, about what to do and what to expect. And it was, again, it was like a father talking to his son. It was that moment. And you could see that Kaz was respecting, uh, the situation. And he was looking up to this guy, not, not as, as, as a, as a host, but as a person to, I'll learn from a mentor, a teacher. And again, that's another theme, right? Teachers, masters, apprentices, the rule of two Star, It's very, very bathed in star Wars themes. Very, very, very bathed in star Wars themes. I also have to say that I love the music from the first episode. I thought the music was fantastic. That felt very, very much like star Wars. Uh, the world that uh, was there on the, uh, on, on the tanker uh, was great. The different alien races, the different species, some recognizable, some new, uh, the, just the way that it felt like it has weird as it sounds. It felt like I was watching breath of the wild, but star Wars edition is how I, how I started viewing it, the cell shading and the way that it's kind of anime inspired, but ultimately the first 45 minutes of it. And again, I'm going to go through the, I'll go through in a proper review later on had me hooked. And then there's two more episodes and I'm, I, I can't wait to go and sit down and watch them. Um, I came out after watching it last night. I looked at my girlfriend, like that was great. That was, that was phenomenal. You know, I'm going to bring up the app. I got to go get my daughter up here in a minute. I'm going to bring up, bring up the app and have her watch that while I feed her, you know, cause I want her to, to watch something like this, to enjoy something like this. She won't get it. She's 10 months old, but it's building the bond now. And I think that's ultimately what star Wars resistance is about. Yeah. It's clearly aimed at a younger audience. It is clearly aimed at the Disney XD Y7, you know, age group, but it's playing at 10 PM. It's airing at 10 p.m. So they're going to be pushing a little bit more dark thematic elements to it as time goes on. And that is something that Star Wars is known for. I, I So again, I just, I don't know much about this world, but based upon the first 45 minutes from the two episodes back to back, the recruit, I am sold on it. I want to know more. I want to see where this goes. And if future is, is if, if the future of Star Wars is television, this is a fine addition to that. This Rebels Clone Wars, Dave Filoni is the guy who should be running Lucasfilm. He should be the guy who is running this shit. And I think he's running a lot of the TV side of things, right? As evidenced by the fact that he will be directing the pilot episode of The Mandalorian, which I am very excited to see what's going on with that because they're shooting that right now, which means he's directing that right now. And so I'm hoping that when he's done with that, he can come on and take over uh, creative control of resistance once he's done working on Star Wars Clone Wars, the, uh, the, new, the new season coming out next year. So... And I'm wondering if they're going to tie any of it together. I'm wondering if there's going to be other legacy characters that make an appearance. Obviously, BB-8, Poe Dameron, uh, Captain Phasma. I read somewhere that like Kylo Ren makes an appearance. I'm, you know, Leia's made an appearance, although she hasn't spoken yet. But with just her her effigy, so to speak, her hologram is there. And I'm wondering what other things are going to bring into this. I'm wondering where they're going to take it. Now, I hope they don't rely entirely on nostalgia uh, for like those cool wow moments. But at the same time. You know, when you like Clone Wars, I, I feel kind of was relying a lot on nostalgia in the first little bit, uh, you know, but then it introduced Ahsoka. And as we got used to her character and the relationship between her and Anakin, as it went forward, people grew to love those two as rebels. We saw Ezra and Kanan, that relationship, again, the parental mentor, men, you know, apprentice situation happening. We saw a lot of that play out as well. Uh, but there was that bond that was created and that bond to the larger world. It became Star Wars. Yes, it wasn't Lucas's Star Wars. It wasn't the movies, but it's television and it's being conveyed in a way that hits all those notes and it hits all those buttons. And that's what Star Wars Resistance did for me. I was I was super excited with it. Uh, I really, really, really enjoyed the whole thing. And I can't wait for more. Uh, this was one that a lot of people were kind of like on. I was sold, I think, from the get go. And I was not disappointed. I was not disappointed at all. Um, yeah, like I said, this is a kid's show. And I'm totally cool with watching a kid's show because I feel it's going to give us uh, good characters, uh, good stories, good action. Some of the cinematography on some of the flight stuff is pretty badass. They go for some pretty cool angles and they they really, you know, they really they really play up a bit of the Top Gun feel to it at times, which I think is really cool uh, how they're able to make it work. And, and yeah, I just, uh, I, I recommend it. And so my reviews for that, for the three episodes will be up later tonight on Three Buck Reviews. 
Uh, but I just wanted to get this out there. I, I, I will talk to you guys later. Oh, well, if you guys saw it, write down your thoughts on it. I, you know, this, there will be spoiler territory, by the way. Uh, and write, uh, write, <laughs> just write resistance in the chat if you guys made it. There we go. That's a long one. Just do resistance so I know you guys made it. Uh, and we'll definitely talk again soon. Be sure to thumbs up the video, subscribe to the channel, check out three buck reviews. I'll talk to you guys later. Have yourself a great day and peace out.